Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Imagine that you are in the 1980s or maybe 19, early 1990s, and you try to find information on certain individuals. And you don't have much uh, information available, obviously, uh, like we have right now, just two clicks away, and you find information on this person, that organization, that country, and all that. You have to go and look into books, you have to read, you have to listen, you have to really get information, uh, you have to do a lot of legwork in order to get information. For that, I admire a person, I will not mention his last name, because, uh, uh, you know, if you say something that you learn from someone who's uh, not a good guy, uh, consider not a good guy, then you would be labeled this and that. So then you avoid to associate yourself with this uh People, even if you learn, might have learned something from uh, the experience of this kind of people. Like, for instance, you learn uh, certain uh, things from, let's say, uh, Joseph Stalin, who said, you know, uh, yeah, let them vote, doesn't matter how they vote, as long as we count the votes. Well, you learn something on that, So, but you can't say, well, I admire this guy, you know. The same uh, on this, I can't say I admire this guy, because if I would say that, I would be labeled this and I would be labeled that and that because that's the way children work in the kindergarten. If you know, if I don't like what you don't give me the candy, you're a bad person and your mom is ugly and so on. So in this case, this gentleman is um, Dr. William. That's enough. And people who know what I'm talking about, they know exactly what I'm talking about. He said that uh, this group of people uh, who uh, work underneath the, the surface of a society, once they get enough power, they will overdo it, which means they will get out from their little catacombs, the little rocks that were hidden, and they will get and they will overexpose themselves that regular people who usually have nothing to do with that group, their organization, will see that there's a problem with those people. So in this case, we have this guy who stays kind of underneath but then from time to time, he uh, uh, gets up and he says something. And the fact that this individual was invited to speak at Davos should uh, give you a lot of information. A lot of doors should be open. Doors of knowledge should be open in your brains. And this is the George Soros. Oh, you heard about him. Good, good. That means I will not have to start from scratch right here. I will start from the middle. So uh, when you see George Soros invited at Davos to address those guys over there who are overly exposing themselves, that tells you that that's the point where they don't really care to be pointed out. Like, oh, that's the guy, oh, that's the guy. Because they think that they have the power by the balls. That's what I think. That's why they dare to show their faces and say stuff. So let's see what this uh, smart guy Soros was a, sp uh, a speculant. He speculated uh, the stock market. That was his job. Now, if you have, I don't know his head or not, uh, inside the trading tips, you will become billionaire overnight. If you get some tips from certain individuals that those stocks will go higher or those guys will go lower, or just that, hey, this country is going to, probably the president is going to issue a declaration of invasion of that country, and you know what to do with your stocks, you become billionaire overnight. I'm just saying this is the way it's a it's a good tip. Or if you have a uh, knowledge in the in the White House or in the Senate, or they will pass a certain kind of law tomorrow and in two days, and you start going on a stock market selling or buying certain stocks, you can become millionaire overnight. So uh, you know these guys are considered geniuses. That's why when you ask a uh, Buffett, or you ask Soros, or you ask these people who are very successful successful on the stock market, you wonder, how? How? And you think that you are a midget compared with their genius uh, shadow that they cast over the world's economies. And they're just speculants. They speculate. That's what they do. They speculate. Now, if you have a tip from some person, you might be billionaire. You don't have to be a genius. You have to have the connection. So let's go. Davos. This is an article from Reuters by G. Falconbridge, Falconbridge, May 24th, 2022. And this is what George Soros, this guy who just takes advantage of, of, of stocks. That's all he does. 
That's his job. And then he uses that money to push some certain social reforms that he would like to be implemented in certain countries that you might disagree with. I might disagree. Nevertheless, he's got the money. He's going to promote them. How are you going to promote it? How are you going to promote yours? Voting? <laughs> okay. So, Davos. Soros says Ukraine may be start of World War Three. Oh, okay. We never thought about that. Thank you, Soros. You're so smart. Uh, all right. Soros says Putin must be defeated. Okay. I'm just going to report what he says, okay? Uh, Soros says Putin may turn off the gas to Europe. Soros says China Xi might not get a third term. All right. So billionaire, and this is the, the uh, I'm going to start reading. Billionaire financier George Soros said on Tuesday that Russia's invasion in Ukraine of Ukraine may have been the beginning of the World War III. So the best way... So, the best way to preserve free, free civilization was for the West to defeat President Vladimir Putin's forces. You know that Putin banned Soros's, uh, you know, um, those uh, GMO, home MGs, uh, you know, non-governmental, uh, whatever, in Russia because they called him, you had to register as a foreign agent, the same... Uh, his um, uh, bad friend, uh, Orban, Viktor Orban of Hungary. So then obviously these guys are upset with that because he can't push his uh, little agenda in Russia. All right, so the invasion may have been the beginning of the Third World War III, of the Third World War, and our, our civilization may not survive it. Your civilization, Soros, does not coincide, coincide with my civilization. That's for sure. So what are you talking about? You got to be specific. When you say our, we're for change. What's change exactly? Your change, what, can you define what exactly you mean by change? You know, when Obama said, uh, change and hope. Change in what? Can you be specific? Change what? Change what? And hope, hope that what? You got to define, it. oh, we love, love this and that. I love freedom. Yeah, I love freedom. Yeah, that's true. Unlimited? Oh, no, 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 it's the freedom we imagine. Oh, I want to hear more about that, Soros. So he's ours, he lumps us all. Maybe he lumps this Davos group's uh, civilization, according to a text from his speech released by his office. The best and perhaps only way to preserve our civilization is to defeat Putin as soon as possible. That's the bottom line. Okay, and I don't know how you're still alive, just to be honest with you, but probably you're not that important if nobody bothered to talk to you. All right, Soros said the European Union had to understand that Putin could turn off Russian natural gas, which currently counts. Really, he could? And he didn't, why? Uh, it was here something I would like. He said, I can't predict the outcome by outcome, but Ukraine certainly has a fighting chance, Soros says. Where is this? He said something here. Oh, Soros, this is how they present Soros. This is the about second uh, paragraph. Soros, 91, a legendary hedge fund manager who earned fame by betting against the pound in 1992. So this is how this guy is uh, reported. I would start differently. Soros, the guy who uh, during the Second World War collaborated with some forces uh, west of Hungary, where he was born as a Jewish uh, person, and then he was collaborating with those guys to get his people in trouble. He says, being 91, that blah. How about that introduction from Mr. Soros? Huh? Oh, no, no, no. Why is that? Because he's part of the club. So, um, all right, Soros. Repressive regimes are now in the uh, ascendant. And open society are under siege, Soros says. Open society meaning what? Accepting every perversion you might think of? No. An open society is not that. Open society has rules. And not every perversion is allowed to, uh, to uh, strive, to whatever, thrive, I'm sorry. 
No, no. That's why there's civilizations and that's why there's no civilizations. There's not anarchy, Soros. You have your say. Good. We can fight it back. So Soros and globalism and Davos and participants, it's good enough to put the names and you're good enough to understand what's going on here. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.